Hey everyone, I'm Adrian. Super pumped to be here. I think we got a lot of students, maybe parents, so strap in. We've got a short little session, but if you guys have questions or comments or want to know more, just come to our booth later today and we'll be happy to kind of elaborate. So today we really just want to pump you all up, give you a snippet of what we do, some of the cool things to think about when it comes to the intersection of games, uh, game design and learning and tons of other really cool stuff. So just to give a bit of background, uh, on my end, I'm the Director of Innovation at the Concussion Legacy Foundation. Um, I was also a hockey player at McGill University, studied kin, kinesiology. Um, then I did some sports management. I did my master's in sports management and just finished a PhD in neuroscience and concussion. So full-blown sporty nerd here, uh, really diving into the world of med tech now. So lots of interest, happy to ask or answer any questions afterwards later this afternoon. And then uh, with me, we've got Kayla Bree from X Movement. So she is quite the accomplished human, if I may say so myself. Um, so she's the founder and CEO of X Movement, one of Canada's largest youth, wealth, uh, youth wellness organizations. She grew up in Australia. You'll hear her soon. Awesome accent. <laughs> Went to university to study commerce and law. And then she left when she uh, landed an, a role on Australia's biggest TV show, which is pretty awesome. Um, after <laughs> she left her career, or afterwards, um, after her career as a TV actress, she moved to Canada where she launched a lot of different businesses, including the current one, X Movement. And she now lives in California, which we all wish we were there, and <laughs> is launching her company in the US, as well as returning to university to study neuroscience and psych. And then uh, we also have Brian. So Brian, uh, I love it when he introduces himself, but I'll give you a little bit of background. So he's a Stanford grad, uh, ex-CFL and NFL player. So don't screw with him. Um, and he also <laughs> he also uh, started uh, a huge um, kind of design, ac design academy and technology accelerator called Play for Tomorrow. So it's absolutely wicked. Um, love to answer questions about that as well later. So Brian, you can elaborate on that now and get our conversation started. <laughs> thanks, Adrian. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks thanks to Joanne and, and, and everyone else here. Um, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I can hear you. Can oh, you great. Hear? Okay. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can hear you. Great. Hey, so thanks to Joanne and Prep Skills. Um, I'm just super geeked because actually, when I remember be sitting in your shoes, um, despite the whole like Stanford uh, sports, NFL, CFL, um, you're never going to get this. When I was when I was your age, watching something similar to this, the one thing I was most proud of in the world was that I built the largest Japanese anim fan site they used to reference on something called Yahoo before Google. And that was my claim to fame. And why I share that is well, why I'm so pumping up is, is when, when you're here at all these conferences and trying to decide your future and what you want to do. And I've heard so many incredible speakers leading up to now. I just, I geek out with Adrian, I geek out with Kayla and it's, it's just doing the things you're passionate about and just mm -hmm. really falling in love with them and building them and knowing that it's a 20 year journey. And guess what? I know you're 15, 16, 17. You've got 20 years to build this empire in your mind, not just yeah. not just one or two years. And, yeah. and, and if you look at the people, I dare you to look at what Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, at what Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and Tesla, at what Bill Gates, the founder of a whole bunch of different stuff, what they were building when they were age, they were just building passion, they were building games they were building games when they were your age okay mm -hmm. so, so so fall in love with your passions geek out and learn and then really great things happen i'm not saying don't work hard don't commit yourself all that kind of stuff but wow just really really building something around yourself yeah okay? uh, thanks i love you the way you pump people up brian i i was asking like well why do you want me to talk on this thing i didn't go to a u.s college etc and bryce said but you are one of the people that have gone after your dreams again and again and again and again and you know, I feel like if I think back to when I was your age, the people listening and watching, I thought that the line would have been much straighter than it actually was. So I thought I would go to university, I'd get my law degree, you know, maybe do a bit of acting on the side. I didn't expect to get a job on Australia's largest TV show. And like I left and then that took me on a journey that 
I got to then experience things that I could have never dreamt of experiencing. And now I'm in Hollywood all, all of a sudden, you know, 15, 20 years later, I'm here, Hollywood, going back to university, still studying psych. I'm, I'm doing like all these things I had never expected that I would, but it was just because I said, yes and any time when i got a no i didn't get into this thing or that thing i found another way so it's like i don't accept no in my life i have my big dreams and no matter how long it takes me i know i'm gonna get there um and i know that's what brian i you and i resonate on that because you're the same you know i think you though maybe you want to talk a bit about how you got into stanford because i think that was a bit more of a straight line for you but then it also opened up you know a whole world of possibilities and you know, now you're doing something completely different where it's your Stanford degree helps, but it's not, you know, necessary because you've started your own business. So you're an organization. So maybe you can talk a bit about that. Yeah. And, and I think I, I actually get asked this question all the time, which is like, well, how did you get into Stanford? And um, yes, 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 yes. I worked really hard. Yes, yes, yes. I was a six foot three and a half giant human being high schooler. Oh, you, no, you still are. <laughs> <laughs> I was a lot bigger back then. But but one of one of the things that uh, a lot of the students in our academy, or just even students that, that I just meet, is you got to do it yourself. Like like it's so weird. It's yeah. I think something happens around like I don't know what it is. Like 13, 14, 15, 16, and and people like like a lot of young people start relying on adults to do things for them. And, and I sit on a library. We've studied over 100 billionaire tech founders and what they did in their teens. They didn't let anyone tell them what to do. It's not that they started when they were 20, 30. They were doing it when they were 12, 13, 14, 15. And they were just building these massive companies and ideas. And Mark Zuckerberg basically built 10 platforms before he built Facebook. And, mm -hmm. and for myself, it was, I knew I wasn't gonna get recruited in Canada. This was before Julian, actually, I went to school with Julian, which is so cool. Hey buddy, if you're still on, so awesome, we'll reach out later. <laughs> but um, there was no recruiting in Canada back in the day. So I called at least 10 to 15 college coaches every Saturday for four and a half months until finally a couple called me back. Mm -hmm. Do you know how hard that was? Do you know how much anxiety I had, right? Cause I'm, I'm playing Star Wars Galaxies, I'm going to practice, I'm building my website and I have to like call these coaches that are just so, Ooh, coaches can be real frothy. They can, they can, they can come at you a little bit. So, uh, you know, and I, so I Brian, a Brian, anxiety. quick, quick question. Like I imagine a lot of parents do this for their, for their kids, like I, it sounds like you didn't have parents to do that for you, which you were lucky. Um, but it sounds like like I'm hearing a really clear message, like you got to do the work yourself. And like even if you're afraid, even if you're feeling anxious, like go above and beyond to like pick up the phone. Like the, I haven't heard that story actually that you did that, and that is so inspirational um, that you took it in your you, you you took control of the thing that you wanted, um, which is incredible. Yeah, and, and, and I, I was fortunate enough to have parents that created an environment of support around me. And one of the things that was instilled on me is that like we had to do it. And and there's this there's this thing. So so it's really interesting. I, I love this word agency. And mm -hmm. and given your former um, Hollywood and to be current Hollywood status, everyone loves the <laughs> word agents, right? You go get an yeah, agent, yeah. right? You go get an agent. Yeah. And what does that agent do? That agent goes get you stuff. Well, you know what? I don't know. Maybe you gotta snippy on the agents and claim your agency. Be yeah. your own best agent. And I'm not yeah. talking about promoter, but one of the ways that you can be your best agent is by creating a constant environment of success around you. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, this is gonna sound simple. It's like, you know, not hanging out with the wrong friends, like making sure you're focusing mm -hmm. on the right things. Like these are all things that actually a pro mm -hmm. agent will tell mm -hmm. their clients to do. And we're just trying to teach it when you're 13, 14, 15, yeah. 16. What? I think I've made it sound really easy that I just landed this job on Australia's biggest TV show, but that's not how it happened at all. I actually figured out who was the decision maker, like who dis who discovered Kylie Minogue and Nicole Kidman and all these people were on this one show. I was like, I'm going to figure out the person. I found her. Her name was Jan Russ. And then I literally stalked her. I found out where <laughs> she was going to be every second weekend. And then I would show up to where she was going to be. And, I, and one time I remember saying, I lived in Melbourne. She was in Sydney. I flew to Sydney and I showed up and she was like, you're here. Why are you here again? And I was like, I'm just really committed to the art of acting. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. Literally that week I got 
invited to an audition her name is and I was like well that's how it happens you know because like I did the work I was my own agent um mm. as you're saying right I literally was my own agent because I had an agent but she wasn't getting me what I wanted so I took it in my own hands so and it sounds like that's entirely possible you know with the stories I'm hearing with U.S. colleges it's like put your brand out there and you've got to focus on your academics but also the business of getting in to where you want to go you know your brand, your social media, you know, how are you presenting yourself? How do you talk to an adult to convince them? Persuasion, all of those things are really important with the business of getting to where you want to get to. Well, and and yes, and I know we got to wrap up. Yes, and this is a big thing. So this was learned to me through like the grit and hellfire that is sports and training camps and NCAA. And like, we can all attest to that if anyone's been through it. And it's that don't just talk about it, be about it right? Yeah. Don't just talk about it. Like, like if you're passionate about a subject, start that club, be that activist, create mm -hmm. that website, reach out to people so that mm -hmm. I always say this to the students, you don't have to tell someone one day I want to go to your school so I can do all this cool stuff. You say, look at all the cool stuff I'm doing. Can I go to your school to learn more skills to be able to do it times 10? Mm -hmm. And that switching makes it makes just lets things happen and they don't have to wait on anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to challenge everyone watching today to like do one thing at least today outside of your comfort zone um, that shows that you're being who you want to become today. So like do that, take action in small little ways every day. And I promise you if it takes one year, five years, 10 years, you will get to where you want to get to. And if you want to see some of the cool stuff that we're geeking out on, Adrian's going to be in the booth later. She can ask her a whole bunch of different questions. She can share links to X Movement, to Play for Tomorrow, and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. And you can see some of the, like, we're adults and we get to build games for millions of people. Do you know how awesome the job, like, like what I'm saying, Brimstone, football, I started my first travel tech company. I get to build games in beautiful places. Like, like just, just hold on to those passions. Have fun, have a blast. <laughs> and yeah, we're looking forward to seeing all the things that you accomplished today. Yeah. Cool. Come by. Yeah. Ask questions. We'll talk to you soon.